Hello friend, this here is the Pro Shop wraparound deck and metal roof for the Flying Armadillo Disc Golf Course in San Marcos, Texas. Now if you need a Pro Shop yourself, or if you've got an old travel trailer and might want to do something like this, then you're in the right place my friend. Here is a step-by-step -step guide just for you. Step 1. Pick your team. You'll need folks that are good in design, have good carpentry skills, lots of muscle, a little bit of electrical knowledge, are good at retail build-outs, can lay down a tile mosaic floor, can weld, and don't mind working for free. Luckily, my son Michael has all of these skills. Step 2. Make a plan. Before you buy a trailer or a lot of materials, make sure you have a good design. In our case, we used Google SketchUp to make a 3D model of our project, but you can use a sheet of paper or maybe you've got it all figured out in your head. Whatever works for you. Step three, buy a trailer. We found a 50 foot 1957 Spartan Executive Mansion travel trailer for $3,000 in Onalaska, Texas. The $800 hauling fee was waived after the driver took out some mailboxes across the street and left a gash in the trailer's skin. Our friend Jojo helped us move the trailer into position. Step 4. Demo the trailer. The floor inside the trailer was rotten, the insulation was crumbling, the wiring was unreliable, and the plumbing and appliances were not needed, so we removed it all leaving nothing but the metal wall studs, the metal floor and ceiling beams, and the trailer's aluminum skin. Step five, build a deck. After the trailer was gutted, we put it up on blocks, leveled it, and removed the wheels and axles. After that, we cut the old thresholds out and cut the doors to match the new openings. A ledger board was then bolted to the trailer and the first beam for the deck was built and leveled on top of concrete pads. Pads were then put in place for the two inner beams, which we built and leveled next. Joists were laid across the, the beams and the fascia boards were added. After framing was complete on the top level, the ramps and steps were framed out, an opening was cut in the wall, and French doors were installed. Finally, the decking could be laid down. Step six, build the roof. A groove was cut into the 8x8 posts that hold the roof up, and then joists and blocking filled the grooves and secured the posts to the deck frame. The decking was laid around them. Beams were made by gluing, clamping, and screwing three 2x6s together around a tenon cut on top of the posts to make a mortise and tenon joint. Braces were cut into an arch shape with tenons at each end that were held by mortises in the post and beam. This joinery was used throughout the roof, giving it the strength and appearance of a timber frame structure, but easier to make and less expensive. Here, the front beam is complete. Here, we're laminating the center beam out of three two-by-sixes while standing on a questionable scaffold. Hmm. In this photo, all three beams are finished, except for one last brace on the center beam. Rafters were cut to fit between the beams, and in this photo, all the rafters are in place and two support beams were built and braced to help with the 16-foot rafter span. All of the frame was then routed. Purlins were placed across the rafters and metal roofing panels were laid on top with a few clear plant panels to let the light in, a view of the underside of the roof and one of the center posts. The last task was to stain the frame of the roof. Step seven, the front side. The deck framing on the back side was continued around the trailer to the front. Cedar poles were used instead of the eight by eight posts used on the back. Concrete pads were poured for the two steps and the ramp. Then the steps and ramp were framed. A handrail was added using electrical conduit for the rails and skirting was made from aluminum roof panels. Finally, decking was installed on the walkway steps and ramps. Step eight, rebuild the floor. The original steel floor beams that ran laterally across the width of the trailer had a trough built into them to hold the plumbing lines. With no plumbing, we didn't need the trough, so we screwed a short two by four to each of the beams to level out the floor. 
Five joists were then laid down the length of the trailer. The metal that covered the wheel wells was removed and framed out, and finally, a poly vapor barrier was laid on top of the joists, and the floor decking was laid on top of that. Step 9. The Electrical Our friend Jojo is an electrician, and he started the electrical work by renting a trencher and cutting a deep trench from our power poles to hold the underground electrical lines. The lines were pulled into the trailer and terminated at a new breaker box. Wires were then run throughout the trailer for the outlets and light fixtures. Step 10. Walls and Ceiling The first step was to rip some thin studs and screw them to the existing metal studs for strength. Insulation was laid between the studs and plywood was placed over the insulation. The window gaskets were replaced and the window trim and wainscoting were added. Slat wall panels were installed on some of the wall space. Then the baseboards, crown molding, and wainscoting were painted. Aluminum roofing panels were installed on the ceiling, then rope lighting and crown molding were installed before finally making and installing hardware brackets to hold discs. Step 11, the mosaic floor. We had bought enough large white tiles to cover the whole floor, but that seemed dull. So to start, I bought five large blue tiles that we cut the corners off of and glued down, evenly spaced on the floor. Not sure where to start, we cut a few white tiles into three or four pieces and laid them down around the first blue tile to make a large flower, sort of. The spaces between the shards were filled with stained glass and beads, and it looked okay, but we had a lot of extra white shards, so we laid them down haphazardly next to the flower. And this didn't look too bad, but it sort of resembled a basket weave pattern, so we went with basket weave for the next section. After that, we had completed about half of the floor and incorporated three of the five blue tiles. Michael suggested we do a mosaic of the state of Texas, so while he worked on that, I made the disc golf basket in the middle. Well, that took a while. But we had two blue tiles left, and we decided to make each one the center of a spiral galaxy, each with eight arms. Each of us completed eight of the, the arms, and with each one, we tried to outdo the other. We put everything we could find on that floor, including poker chips, dice, glass beads, Day of the Dead tiles, mirror, checkerboards, and even bottle caps. Michael worked on the last spiral, and it turned out the coolest, with bicycle chain, gears, ball bearings, and wrenches. We went a little crazy at the end with all the detail, but it gives the pro shop a weird colorful vibe. It took us three months to complete on our hands and knees in the middle of a cold winter. And it turned out okay. I, well, maybe it turned out better than okay, but I will never do another floor uh, like this again. <laughs> this is a photo of the entire mosaic floor from beginning to end. Step 12. The Office A glass cabinet was placed at the end of the mosaic floor and separated the office area from the retail area. An arch was built over the cabinet to hold the recessed lights, and a U-shaped cabinet was then built along each of the three walls. At this point, the pro shop was open for business, so we weren't able to finish the trim work because of the customers. That's my excuse anyway, but we will finish the office one day. Step 13, some extras. So we landscaped around the pro shop, filled it up with inventory, added some tables and chairs, and a few games on the back porch. Some metal art was hung in the rafters, along with pendant lights and ceiling fans. Rope lights were hung along the roof line. This pro shop was made by my son Michael and myself. Michael is the bearded one on the left, and the old guy on the right was me. If you made it this far, 
Thank you. Adios.